G'day and welcome to Nevadia. Hi everyone, my name is Meredith and welcome to my highly uncontroversial topic of the day, vaccines! Now, obviously they are controversial, but the reason why I'm saying that they're not controversial is because they're not. In the scientific community, that is. It has been shown that vaccines are very safe, very cheap and very effective for the prevention of diseases. So there's a lot of information out there about vaccines. <coughs> Andrew Wakefield. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we've all heard about the MMR vaccine and the autism link, but of course it has been thoroughly debunked. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to put my own controversial opinion out there, and that is that Andrew Wakefield should be arrested for murder. I know that sounds extreme, but I can think I can probably argue quite well for that argument. For example, his study linking MMR and autism was eventually retracted by The Lancet, which originally published it and it was investigated by the General Medical Council for Ethic Breaches, who recently concluded that he had acted and ir dishonestly and irresponsibly in doing his research. Because what he didn't say was that he was hired by lawyers as an expert who was suing over alleged vaccine injury. Of course, vaccine injury can happen, but is extraordinarily rare. 10 of the 12 people who contributed to the study withdrew their support for it. There were major, 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 major issues with it, such as a small sample study size of eight children and a bias selection protocol. He even paid children at a party to get samples of their blood. Thousands and thousands, 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 thousands of studies have since been disproved this link, and yet for some reason we still have to explain that it does not happen. But why do I think Andrew Wakefield should be arrested for murder? Because he is still campaigning against the MMR vaccine and other life-saving vaccines, such as the HPV vaccine, which prevents certain cancers such as cervical, anal, throat and mouth cancers. He has been active in the anti-vaxxer community and he's still doing it to this day, all through the 2000s and through the 2010s. He released the anti-vaccine movie called Vaxxed in 2016 and was even seen at Trump's inaugural ball in 2017. Trump, by the way, is an anti-vaxxer. He knows his views are wrong. He has to know these views are wrong. And yet he still advocates for vaccine refusal, which directly contributes to the death and misery and permanent damage done to people, and he's seriously doing his best to stop these life-saving measures. Look, I won't go into the history of the anti-vaccine movement, that's not what I'm here for, but it's a really interesting story, and I strongly recommend you look at the link to a Quora post by Christine Carson about the history of vaccines that I put in the description below. I also linked a website which I initially thought was an anti-vax site called Vaxipedia, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it if you want some more information about the story behind Wakefield. I also want to touch on something. One of the things that anti-vaxxers like to talk about are vaccine injuries. For example, a measles outbreak at the end of 2019 in Samoa was triggered by two infants dying from receiving the measles vaccine that was diluted by an expired muscle relaxant in 2018. And unfortunately, after that, the Samoan government put a halt to MMR vaccination. This is not an example of vaccine injury, but an example of human error. Please keep an eye on this video as I will periodically add information regarding any outbreaks of any vaccine preventable diseases in the description below. So as you share with this video with your friends and family, please check if I've added any more links. Off the anti-vax bandwagon, I want to address the terrifying molecule called thimerosal or thimerosal. Those two pronunciations are fine and I'll swap between the two just to confuse you. So thimerosal looks like this. The HG here is the mercury atom. So one of the very scary things about this molecule that gets thrown around is that 54% of the weight of thimerosal is mercury. Oh my god! It isn't actually, but I'll show you why later. And so if you don't know what that means, it is actually quite a scary thought. But let's have a look at thimerosal again. If you look closely, you'll only see one mercury atom in the entire molecule. But why is it 54, which it isn't, percent of the weight? Well, the easy answer to this question is that it's big and heavy. For example, you have an adult in a room of 14 newborn babies. The percentage weight of the adult would be much higher than the percentage weight of the babies combined. So if you weighed all of the babies and all of the adults together and their combined weight is 100 kilograms and the adult weighed 55 kilograms, the adult would be 55% of the mass of humans in the room, despite being 6.7% of the number of humans in the room. Does that make sense? 
Thimerosal's molecular weight, which is the weight of all of the atoms combined in thimerosal, is 404.81 AMUs. Quick recap for non-chemists. An AMU stands for atomic mass unit, which is what one mole of the average weight of the isotopes of an element weighs in grams. Okay, so without going too deeply into the history of AMUs and going way off topic, a mole is an easy way to say this number without having to say 6.022 times 10 to the 23 3,000 times. So imagine being a chemistry lecturer without having the ability to say the word mole and you had to say 6.022 times 10 to the 23 500 times during a lecture, it would quickly become annoying. An equivalent in English would be the word dozen. So when someone says the word dozen, we know they mean the number 12. So when a person says the word mole, they mean the number 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Every element has its own weight. So a typical hydrogen has a proton and electron, and one mole of hydrogen weighs roughly 1.008 grams. A typical carbon has six protons and six neutrons and six electrons, and one mole of carbon weighs 12.008 grams. A mole of carbon is heavier than a mole of hydrogen because of the different numbers of the neutrons and the protons. So one mole of mercury weighs 200.59 grams as a typical mercury atom has 80 protons and 121 neutrons. A mole of each element all have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms, but they all have different weights because each element contains a different number of protons and neutrons. Clear as mud? So to make things even more confusing, chemists have had to take into account the average of all of the isotopes of the element and average it out, which is why carbon has an AMU of 12.008 grams, even though AMUs is based on carbon, which again is another video for another time. To figure out a percentage weight of a molecule, we go by this formula. Mass percentage equals molecular mass of an element over the molecular mass of a molecule times 100%. So for thimerosal, the equation looks like mass percentage of mercury equals the molecular mass of mercury over the molecular mass of thimerosal times 100%. Plugging in the numbers, mass percentage of mercury is 200.59 over 404.81 times 100%. So the mass percentage of mercury is approximately 50%, not 54%, as previously mentioned. So now that we vaguely understand what the hell I'm talking about, I also want to go into toxicity. Is mercury poisonous? Yes, undoubtedly. Many people have died of mercury poisoning, and you've all probably heard of the saying the Mad Hatter, and that comes from the fact that people who made hats back in the day would put mercury on the inside of the hats and they'd go a little bit crazy from the poisoning. But then again, many people have died of nitrogen and carbon poisoning, and they have very important elements in the building blocks of our DNA. You see, even though mercury is poisonous, it also depends on how it is bound to elements surrounding it. So going back to my earlier mention of carbon and nitrogen, when they are bound together, they look like this. By the way, the hydrogen may or may not be there. This is known as cyanide. When enough cyanide is ingested, it stops the production of cell energy, which makes the cell go into anaerobic respiration. So basically the cell starts to do what it normally does with oxygen, without it, which then causes lactic acid buildup, which turns into metabolic acidosis. So basically your body becomes acidic, which then kills you. The fact that oxygen isn't being used by the victim's cell is why people who have cyanide poisoning tend to get blue around their lips. Even the word cyanide has its root in blue, as the word cyan describes a light blue color. Pure mercury is actually reasonably non-toxic. I mean, I wouldn't suggest drinking it, but it is actually not that toxic. You can see many YouTubers playing around with mercury without gloves on because it is reasonably safe. I've linked a video to Cody's lab where he tries standing on mercury with bare feet. He does mention he does have a cut on his foot, so he ends up putting protective gear on, but if he didn't have a cut, he would have been pretty fine if he just waded around without any shoes on. In fact, in ancient Asia, they used to drink mercury as a laxative, and some poor sod had to go through the feces and remove the mercury because it was very expensive. Thankfully, we have psyllum husks to do that for us now, so cheers, psyllum husks. On the other hand, you have this horrific molecule called dimethylmercury. 
Note the mercury has two methyl groups here and here. So a methyl group is a CH3, while an ethyl group is a carbon chain, which is CH2 linked to CH3. Methyl mercury is much more toxic than ethyl mercury, which is what thimerosal is. Less than 0.1 milliliters, which is approximately a single drop of dimethyl mercury, can cause severe mercury poisoning and is very good at murdering you. And it does so by going through personal protection equipment and gets absorbed into the body with gusto. So you might have heard of someone called Karen Wettenhan. She died after being exposed to this molecule. She had two layers of gloves on and she just before she died, she reported she spilled two drops of this stuff on her hand. Yes, that is definitely a molecule that is never going anywhere near me for whatever reason at all. The reason why dimethylmercury is so toxic is it jumps the blood brain barrier and interrupts important signaling processes in the brain and is very good at binding to fat. So you just can't get rid of mercury by chelation therapy. I explain chelation therapy in this video right here. By the time Karen Wetterhand displayed some symptoms of mercury poisoning, it was way too late. The mercury in her body was 80 times the lethal dose. And that's just from two drops of the stuff. It's terrifying. So now that I've explained to you that the toxicity of elements are not just simply, this is toxic, it also depends on what it's attached to. I mean, there's always exceptions, like there's definitely going to be some elements you don't want anywhere near you. I also want to introduce you to another concept called LD50. So this is known as lethal dose 50, and it is the amount of substance needed to kill 50% of a test subject shown in milligrams per kilogram. For example, if a molecule takes 11,900 milligrams per kilogram to kill 50% of rats, and the other one takes 16,600 milligrams per kilograms to kill 50% of rats, the first one is more toxic than the second one. By the way, fun fact, the first one is vitamin C and the second one is MSG. Thimerosal has an LD50 of approximately 75 to 91 milligrams per kilogram in mice. Now that actually might sound like a really large range, but let's remember Remember, this is milligrams per kilograms. Milligrams is a thousandth of a gram and a kilogram is a thousand grams. So you need to expect a little bit of error because one milligram is a million times smaller than a kilogram. Just letting you know the reason why they put thimerosal into a vaccine is to actually use it as a preservative. It kills microbes. So if we assume that the middle ground of thimerosal's LD50 is 80 milligrams per kilogram that is toxic to all life forms, we also have to look at the weight of a microbe to a human baby getting their injections. So the mass of a single E. coli microbe is 9.5 times 10 to the negative 16 kilograms, which is this ridiculous number below. A baby who's getting their measles shots weighs approximately 9.5 kilograms, which is 16 orders of magnitude larger than an E. coli microbe. Now, if the LSD of thimerosal is 80 milligrams per kilogram, the child would need to be exposed to 760 milligrams for her to have a 50% chance of her dying. The microbe, on the other hand, would require 7.6 times 10 to the negative 15 milligrams for it to have a 50% chance of death. My maths might be a little bit out. I must admit, I've never been great at orders of magnitude, but I think you kind of get my point. That is not a lot of thimerosal that is needed to kill a microbe. So going back to what I was saying before, of why they use thimerosal in a vaccine and they use it as an antibiotic, a preservative. It is used in vaccines, obviously, as, as well as other things like cosmetics, which I thought was interesting. It was used in different vaccines, such as the MMR, because they used to be packaged in larger vials to reduce waste. So what would happen was the doctor would sterilize the top of the, the vaccine, stick a sterile needle in there, stick it in the child, take it out, get rid of the needle, and then sterilize the top of the, the thing again, stick it in, and ster a sterile needle, obviously not using the same one, and stick it in another baby. And that was to reduce waste. The reason why thimerosal was put into these multi-use vials is to ensure there was no contamination of bacteria in the vaccine. It doesn't matter how good you are at sterilizing things, microbes are everywhere, and eventually one of them is going to 
get in there and cause some contamination. I'll quote from a website called Drug Bank, which is linked in the description below when it comes to exposure to thimerosals in vaccines. Prior to the recent initiative to reduce or eliminate thimerosal from childhood vaccines, the maximum cumulative exposure to mercury via childhood routine vaccines during the first six months of life was 187.5 micrograms in the most recently formulated vaccines, and the maximum cumulative exposure during the first six months of life should now be less than three micrograms of mercury. Currently, thimerosal may still be used in the early stages of manufacturing of certain childhood vaccines, although only, however, a trace amount remains after a chemical purification process. Note the dose above is indicated for children one to six months of age and is applicable only in the United States and other countries may have varying indications. So 187 micrograms is still a lot less than what is considered to be toxic for the LD50 of 760 milligrams. But I'll also point out that thimerosal is removed by the gastrointestinal tract. So the body does get rid of it. There are processes within the body that gets rid of heavy metals because we have evolved with heavy metals. It's not great. It's very, very slow, but it's there. So the amount does get reduced and taken out by the gastrointestinal tract. Its half-life is approximately 50 days in humans and can be dangerous to developing fetal brains, but not of that of an infant as by the time that they have had their follow-up shots, the levels of thimerosal has been reduced in their bodies. So to put it into context, a bit after three months, 75% of the thimerosal that was injected into the system has been re removed. So I hope we have established that thimerosal is safe at the doses given in the vaccine. Fun fact, so one shot with the vaccine containing thimerosal contains roughly the same amount of mercury in a 85 gram tin of tuna. In fact, the tin of tuna mercury is actually more toxic because it's the methyl mercury, not the ethyl mercury. So we're good with that? Do we all understand where I'm coming from? Thimerosal is safe. So I just want to quickly address something that a lot of people say, which is, well, if it wasn't toxic, why did they remove it from vaccines? And the reason why they removed it was propaganda. People who didn't understand chemistry heard the word mercury and pushed to get it removed from vaccines. Scientists had to find another way of keeping life-saving vaccines safe to use, despite the fact that there was already a cheap and safe chemical already in circulation. I also want to say something else. The complications of getting measles is this. Fever, rash, conjunctivitis, coughing, pneumonia, diarrhea, bronchitis, inner ear infections, brain inflammations, blindness, and death. In the US, one out of 1,000 previously healthy children that gets measles can get acute encephalitis, which leads to permanent brain injury. In addition to that, the death rate of number of measles is one or two in every 1,000 previously healthy children. The immune system is also compromised from weeks to months and even years, opening up the victim to secondary infections. Measles has a 90% chance of spreading from one person to another if they have not been immunized. It can also live up to two hours in the air or on surfaces. And it can, and it does kill people. On the other hand, let me directly quote an article published in NCBI in the following sentence, and the link, of course, is in the description below. Another study published in 2003 using electronic health record databases found that after 7,644,049 doses of vaccination in children and adolescents, there were five possible cases of vaccine-associated anaphylaxis, and none resulted in death. So in 7.6 million doses of vaccines, none resulted in death compared to two to three children having permanent brain damage or death from measles. I think I've made my point. So please get vaccinated. It is super important. They are safe. They are cheap. They are there to protect you and the people you love from serious illness. They do not cause autism. They do not cause ADHD. Their mercury content is extraordinarily low, even if they have mercury. So please get vaccinated. And on that depressing note, I just wanted to say sulfur, carbon, iodine, and cerium. See you later, everyone.
I also want to say a special thank you to my wonderful patrons, especially my $10 Redback Spider patrons, Aided Furball, Lauren Hart, Ross Devereux, and my two new Redbacks, Amanda Vogue and Mary Civitano. Hello, my lovely friends. Also, I want to thank my wonderful $20 Platypus patrons, Atheist Pastor and Jasser G. Thank you very much. And please, 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 everyone go get vaccinated.